Hello there, Super Mega Cast listeners. I, Ryan McGee, want to talk to you about Etsy. I love to shop on Etsy for beautifully made items from independent sellers. Etsy sellers have everything from statement pieces like rugs and sofas to daily staples like outwear and accessories. Shop jackets, jewelry, furniture, art, and more made for all budgets and any occasion. New to Etsy? Use the code NEW for 10% off your first purchase. That's code NEW. Maximum discount value of $50. Offer ends June 30th, 2023. See terms at etsy.com slash terms. Oh, gosh darn. Another episode of the Super Mega Cast. That's right. We just came through uh, our, our portal from the animated world into real life Los Angeles. <laughs> um, yep. We're here to do another great episode for you turkeys. It's, uh, it's going to be one for the books. I'll yeah. tell you that right now. It's... Uh, like ev- not like every episode isn't one for the books, but this episode in particular. This is a top shelf book. This yeah. is gonna. It's like in Harry Potter in the in the restricted section. You know exactly. It's the book that screams at you. It, yeah. If if you were to take this off a shelf and open it, it's gonna fucking scream in your face. Yes. Yeah. But instead of screaming, it's gonna be wild laughter. Just just absolutely crazy wild laughter. So yeah. You guys better get geared up for some good laughs. Yeah. Better get ready. This is the Try Not to Laugh Super Mega Cast Edition. I don't know if you guys can handle this one. Guys, how far can you get in this episode without cracking even a smirk? Yeah. Okay. I know it's gonna be hard for me and pretty hard for Ryan, but oh. I'll see how you guys can do. My glasses are dirty as hell. Yeah. I'm sitting here. Can you notice that? Can you, you see it? Do you keep a like a microfiber cloth around you to clean to keep your no, glasses I don't. clean? Do you keep do you have a glasses case? I don't have a glasses case. They're just usually on my face or by on my bedside or, table. Uh, yeah, somewhere. You know, a glasses case, I heard, works wonders. It keeps your glasses first protected from anything. There's a shell that comes around. You know, you open it, put the glass inside. And within that, you can also store a microfiber cloth, Mm. especially if you're someone that happens to wear glasses more than they don't. I don't know. It's just this. it's, It's like a. am sure you could find it somewhere. I don't buy into that bullshit, you know. I, I'd rather just do a little spit shine on them. <laughs> of course, of course. How how's it, how's it usually go with the spit? Is, is is spit a good cleaner for glasses? No, it's awful. It makes them cloudy and smudged. Mm. I'm sure. I'm sure if I if I gave it a good look. All right. Okay. You know what? I've been wondering why even after I clean my glasses, there's still a blurry a blurry spot. I'm looking now. There's a scratch on my damn lenses. Well, it seems like you need new glasses, sport. Or I might just have to get a little. Ooh, that is crystal clear. Yeah. I might have to get a little LASIK. You know. I was thinking of getting myself some glasses soon, like nighttime reading type of glasses. Oh, yeah? Because, uh, like, you know, while my vision is, is near perfect, uh, I think the, I remember the conversation I had with the, uh, what, op, optometrist, what, who, who, what is it, op, op, optic, op, op, optic, optic person, the optic doctor. Optrician? Oh, dude, I don't, op, ophthalmologist? Ophthalmologist. No, I don't know. I, so the people who look at your eyes at Target or, or those places, uh, they were like, "Wow, you don't need glasses. It would help slightly at like nighttime when you're driving to reduce like the shine from certain lights, and then uh, just nighttime like reading like small fonts and stuff." And you know, since I'm a bit of a, a a board game fanatic recently, and there's there's a little tiny you know reading the rule books and all this stuff. I think it would be nice to have a little pair of glasses to, to not strain my eyes so much. They getting a little blurry for you? Uh, I, I noticed that a difference. Like if the text is like super tiny, like it's it's just kind of like a little fuzzy. Like Are I things fuzzier up close than farther away? No, I'm I'm nearsighted, so up close is fine. But after you start reaching about like maybe ten feet, it starts yeah. getting blurry. It changes. Mine is, mine is like day. yards down, but like when, if it's like really small text. It really starts to come into to play at night when my eyes are all dry. I could just start, you know, putting some water in my Put eyes. Put some lotion in them. Exactly. You know what you do is you take a little bit of, like, Gold Bond lotion, you know, kind of rub it in your eyes a little bit, you know, moisturize I heard, them. I heard cocoa butter is great for your skin. Why not just put it directly on your eyes? Because your eyes need moisture. It's moisturizing lotion. It's specifically to moisturize. Another good thing you can do, this is more of, like, a at-home remedy if you don't mm. want to spend all the money on... Uh, expensive lotions because they're expensive. Just take like a stick of butter, okay, um, and you you wrap the you take the the paper wrap off and just take the stick and just kind of hold your eye open, just <laughs> just kind of you know smudge it across a few times and it, it moisturizes. And the oil the oils in it are good for your eyes too. From butter, mm-hmm. 
a lot I, uh, of vitamins and minerals. I don't believe it, but I'll have to try it at some point because uh, I can't—I can't, I can't go through life saying, for example, you can't go through life saying God doesn't exist, Jesus doesn't exist without the proper proof, right? Exactly. So I'm gonna I, since I can try this one out for myself, I will. I, I'll tell you how it goes. But right now, I'm a little suspicious that it's going to hurt, burn a it little, doesn't. and affect my vision permanently. It doesn't. I've been okay. doing it. Okay. Another thing is, you know, they say, you know, dogs uh, have, like, healing properties in their saliva. Mm -hmm. That's why they'll, like, they lick wounds. You know, you have a dog at home. Yep. You could just kind of go up to him, hold your eye open. I guarantee in just a few seconds he'll lick your eyeball for you. And their their tongues are cleaner than that of a toilet bowl's. Than a toilet bowl's tongue? Than a toilet, just a to to toilet bowl in general. Yeah, it, you know, it's, uh, I don't... To I, toilet bowls don't have tongues, Matt. Well, uh, maybe not yours. But... You're, I know you're over there with your fancy bidet, but my toilet just... You have a bidet, too. Uh, the, the person that we need to get on the bidet train still is, is, Justin. is Justin. We, we Jordan Justin. Peterson left a message on the last episode that, uh, that we recorded, at least. Um, and uh, we've talked about it on the Sonic 06 playthrough. I don't, I don't even know yet, but we do talk about it. Spoiler alert. Um, and I'm yeah. hoping to one day to, to show up to Justin's place, and he has a beautiful bidet installed. It doesn't have to have a seat warmer, but something where I go over, and you know how chili fucks you up, because yeah. Justin, I will say, Justin, fantastic editor, great lover, but an even better chili cook. His chili, I would say, t like, in terms of all food ever created, like, starting from, like, Caveman, it's probably in the top five, just because it's so simple and chunky and meat-filled. Um, Some good slop. I've only had it once. But it was delicious. It's great. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't trust people with the specific ingredients uh, too well. He's he's he keeps that close to the chest. So even letting you taste it to him is a big step in the right direction. Which so he's I, never let me taste it again. Yeah, so I think th for you that's big. That's big. That's a step in the door at least. Yeah. Um. But uh. So Justin's Justin's chili in general. I think that's what he would need to focus on. Honestly, he's he's. First, he's getting a lot of publicity with the Chris Hemsworth stuff, right? And and the key to the city, all of the stuff is sure creating a bit of an ego. I just hope that doesn't affect the love that he puts into his chili. Like he might just start phoning it in. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm Justin. It's my chili. I mean, he might phone it in with the editing. That's what I'm worried about. Maybe what we need to do is is next time we have the chili, mm. just don't compliment it. Just have a couple bites and go. Hmm. Okay. Be like, this is, and, and you know. It's a good batch. Of course he'll go, how is it? You know, okay, he needs a, the validation. We, we it's, a, it's a fine batch. Like fine. A, fine is the key word we need to use, I believe. It's good. But in general, I, I talked about the bowls of chili because, long story short, chili sometimes can make a little bit of a mess in, in, in your yeah. undergarments if you're not too careful. Uh, and if Justin was the chili house, how great would it be if he had something to kind of Help out with the problem that chili causes, Dude, which is muddy butt. You can't be making chili every week and then not have a bidet. Right. It, it's it's like having a carriage without a horse, you know? Okay, so someone of like mine also agrees. Oh, I, I, I think it's just common sense. I I, I don't know what it is. I, I, I want him to be excited about a bidet because when I got a bidet— and I tried it out for the first time. I was like, I got really excited. It's an exciting I, thing. I was like, I have a clean, like, I know my asshole's clean. It's this triumphant moment in anyone's life who owns a bidet um, that they finally have a clean ass. Because you think your ass is clean until you use a bidet. Everyone at the office has a clean asshole. Except, I mean, Justin, when he walks by, I can smell it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of like it radiates this stench. You can smell his lunch and probably dinner from the day before as well. Yeah, and, and I don't know why he's so against it you know he has the money to get one he has the resources to set it up himself i it's not even a matter of money for me it's more of it's like he should want a clean asshole yeah does he enjoy having a dirty asshole and you don't have to use as much you don't have to go like i remember before a bidet how much toilet paper i'd go through sometimes you have a messy bottom oh for me it's it's now after the bidet maybe two three wipes max and that's mainly just to get the water off yeah it's i was about to say 
If you still need three wipes no, after no, using no, no, the bidet, no. it, it's really just a better bidet. It, it's just a, it's just to get all the you water. You have to damp off. the water off of your bum bum. Yeah, and there's a lot of water up there after. And and there's some there's some uh, there's some wet yellow or brown still there that you need to wipe just off a little, a little bit, bit though. Uh, but then when you go for that second wipe and second it's all wipe, clean, just a little bit of dabs of water, you go perfect. See what I do is the first the first wipe after the bidet is mainly to get the water off. Mm -hmm. Second wipe is just to just to really eliminate any remaining yellow or brown. And yeah. then the third wipe is just for safety. It's yeah. just because if there was any yellow or brown, that's an indicator that you need to do at least one more wipe just to make sure. Yes. And then that last third wipe usually is perfectly white. So and yeah. and I talked about this before. I know it's a bit of a an advanced move here. Uh, Jim's talk. I, Jim does it, and Luke I think does too. Luke started to do it. Um, this isn't on my, like, Jim and I separately came to this conclusion that this is a great oh, idea. Oh, did you? I thought you yeah. told him. Mm -mm. This is just like, uh, I remember I told Jim one day and he was like, yeah, I do the same thing. There's a lot of camaraderie and hugs in that moment. I was, I remember. Um, but just, <sighs> hold on one second. Sorry. I'm, not, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable, uncomfortable in my chair. It's, it's all right, man. Do Your you back I, is all good. Do goofed. you mind if I change position? Hey, man, do what you got to do. Is this, is this good? I can, see, I can see more of your leg. I like it. Maybe I can get like a little bit of a, a stretch in too to help out. Oh yeah. So like yeah, while yeah. I'm talking about this, but sorry, sorry, sorry to, to trail hey, off. It's all good, brother. Um, uh, so long story short, I think the the, the thing that we just, sorry, sorry, I was gonna I was gonna tell about the advanced little move. We didn't even, I didn't even discuss what it was or go into detail. It's when you store a lot of the water that you that you retrieve uh, from the bidet into your asshole. Hold it in there to kind of douche it out. Then you blow all this water out along with maybe any little bits that are still stuck inside of you. So it, the thing is, our, asshole, our assholes aren't just clean. The inside of our ass is clean. Yes. You know? You can stick a tongue in there. Yeah, and it would be very clean. Yeah, you, know, you can trust my asshole. Just, and I can trust yours. Exactly. Where Justin, you know, if you like licked his asshole, it's dirty. But if you were to stick a tongue in, even worse, yeah. you know? It's it's going to be like a fondue fountain, dipping a, dipping a banana under a fondue fountain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really, all the rest of us here have magnificent assholes. There's one thing that, and I want him to get on this too, Ryan, because, you know, the, ass, the Burbank asshole inspector comes by. Yeah. You know, we would get a low rating because... Specifically only... Because of Justin. Justin would bring the rest down. Otherwise, we'd have a 100% perfect score here of clean assholes. When he lines us up against the wall, spreads our cheeks, and takes a peek. And so a, sniff a whiff and a lip, first. And, and a lick. Yeah. You know, he does all three. He takes a look, goes, and gives it a little lick. <laughs> We're going to be brought down. You know, it's kind of like, imagine a, a restaurant, right? Where in the kitchen, all the employees are following very, you know, they wash their hands. They, they follow very strict health codes preparing the food. But if there's one employee that doesn't wash his hands and helps prepare the food, you know, that what does that do? It sinks the whole ship. One loose board can can make the the whole river flood, you know, from the dam that the beavers build. Exactly. Exactly. So in terms of the 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 method you use where where you fill your asshole with water, mm. I've been trying. I don't know how to do I, it. I don't. As I said, it's an it's an advanced technique. You need to kind. I might of, not be there yet. I, I, I try mean, to relax my asshole. It I requires try. a certain base of intelligence, which you don't have. Um, right. So I think that's kind of getting in the way. It requires a little more effort on your part. I really you try. Are, I sit there and I, I strain my brain and I try to relax, but like the water just 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 hits the rim. Yeah. And sprays back down. I mean, I I don't I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I would say doing some Sudoku puzzles and some heavy reading could help boost your intelligence so you're so those neurons when you are doing that action of trying to douche with the water those neurons might connect if 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 you try to as i said reading is a big one sudoku puzzle any sort of puzzles a jigsaw puzzle even might help uh, stimulate the brain uh, um anything that can help stimulate the brain and as i said get those neurons to connect where you finally have that aha moment that a lot of people have in dark souls games for example when they finally beat a boss this is your Dark Souls boss. I don't know, man. Douching with a bidet. The, the, the neurons, I don't, I don't know if there's much hope there. Mm. You know? Yeah. I think my, 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 my pie is pretty cooked up here already. You know? <sighs> I mean, the crack doesn't help either of us. 
No, and um, I consume more of it than you do. But it's because I, it's because I game more regularly that I have such a higher threshold of intelligence than you. I wouldn't take that. Like if if you did like game a little more, which I will say, another thing that is helping you is your new attachment to RuneScape Online, old school RuneScape Online, yeah. which you have been playing consistently on your phone and computer. I've been I've been putting between three to six hours a day into old school RuneScape lately, every day. And d so a, lar a large part of that, I guess you can go in, how much of your enjoyment of old school RuneScape is nostalgic and then good game design mechanics and all of that? Like, it's a good game. Of oh. course, RuneScape is a great game. I mean, but I like, how much of that nostalgic factor do you think weighs into your enjoyment? For me, now, very little. Because... You're in it again. Well... I've played it many times in the past, mm -hmm. right? I played it in 2006 when I first started Old School RuneScape, and I played it for several years. And then I've, you know, here and there I've made new accounts and picked it up. But this is the first account where I've actually, like, dove into the game and started doing quests in different type. Like, I've actually learned about the game this time. You have, like, a members service thing? Mm -hmm. What is, what? so what is that? That wasn't ever, like, was that ever given it, it was, to... It was always a thing. It, okay. Where basically, like, because I was never a member, I was. Just, I always I just wanted my, it. I just had my little account. Yeah, so there's free to play, which is just like a chunk of the world, but the world's pretty big. You unlock the rest of that. You also unlock a lot of new quests. You unlock a lot of new skills. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, the ability to like create different things and wield different weapons. Um, just doing a lot of game expanding stuff, and it's 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 like a monthly membership. It's pretty cheap. Would you say you're gearing to be more, are you like a class specific, or are you kind of an all around, all edge? I've been leveling my magic lately. I'm at okay. level 49 right now. Okay, do you have a little wizard's hat? Not at the moment, no. <sighs> but, uh, you know, I've completed all free to play quests except for two. Oh. And, you know, what's really made this playthrough different is when I used to play RuneScape, I would just level up by just Clicking, chopping trees, making fires, Fishing. attacking things. Yeah. See, now I'm learning there's there's different, you know, perks. There's different quests that give you that stuff. There's different places to travel that give you more. So I've been, I've really been uh, diving beneath the surface that I never knew was there. So I'm really actually, like, going pretty deep this time. I just got my prayer up to almost level 60. I know a large part of why people liked RuneScape and why I liked RuneScape and what was so kind of... Um uh intoxicating about it was the online component was seeing that all of these pieces moving on the board are 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 real players themselves you know negating the npcs is there still like a lot of uh, i know there's a lot of people who still play runescape but does it feel as filled and as uh i guess social as it did back in the day like when you played in 2006 or like yeah i i, I don't i don't know the exact year when i played it was probably around the same time just when, when I called it run escape, before I knew better. <laughs> it uh, it does. It actually has the fun because you know there's like regular RuneScape still. Mm -hmm. It seems barren when you were playing it. At, oh, in the I, beginning. it's because I was playing on members only worlds. Okay, and those, depending on which world, don't have a lot of people. If you go to like a like a free to play world or one of the main members worlds, there's a ton of people. Okay, but I like playing in the more quiet ones. Uh, but um. I would like to give, actually, to finish that, uh, Old School RuneScape has a bigger player base than regular RuneScape still. They have, like, over a million monthly players, so. Yeah. Quite a big, quite a big, uh, you know, uh, player base. There's a lot of people on there. And shout out to Brandon. Um, I put on Twitter, Brandon. I was, I, his name was just Brandon. Okay. I, I put on Twitter, I said, I, I am in World 306, try to find me. But I had not made my, I haven't made my username public. Mm -hmm. It's not Matt. Watson or anything like that and this guy comes up to me just guessed it and was like I know it's you and then your username I will I'm not gonna give, I'm not gonna give it away but if you're looking for Matt in a specified world and the, then you do see that username and you're already aware it's kind of like that's got to be him three there's people. no way that's not him three people found it one guy gave me a smelly sock yeah so thank you for that but Brandon well okay before before you get onto that I just want to know how did you get past the censorships to be able to have that name because mm. usually I, like people switch like the I for a one sometimes no but... uh I know someone at Jagex um, okay we were mutuals on Twitter and he pulled a couple strings for me that name is normally not allowed on any online service yeah uh I mean and granted no one had taken it yet because because you know, no one can have yeah, it. Yeah. So, so I guess lucky for you. 
But anyway, sorry, you were Brandon. Yeah, Brandon um just gave me ten million gold. Just just really out of the kindness of his heart. So I'd like to give a shout out to Brandon. Um thank you. I think my biggest lot. accomplishment in RuneScape was getting like gold trimmed armor at some point. I got gold trimmed. That was like armor. my big like it looks cool. And I was just excited about that. I got full rune gold trimmed right now. Um <sighs> but I can't wear the plate body yet because I've not completed the Dragon Slayer quest. Okay. But I but what I do is is I work my way up so I got full gold trim mithril, full mm -hmm. gold trim adamant, and then whenever I level up and I don't need it anymore, I give Luke my hand me downs because Luke has been playing a lot. I played like six hours. He's yesterday. playing catch me up, but he's he's pretty quick with it. He my combat level is about fifty one right now. He's at about thirty. So what I'm doing is you know I'll give him my gold trimmed hand me downs. Yeah. I also gave him a couple mil from Brandon's generous donation. I'm sure he he really appreciates it, Luke. He doesn't show that he appreciates it. He just kind of takes it. He, yeah. And, and you know, it's like, I everyone expresses gratitude differently, right? Mm -hmm. You know, love languages, you know, for some it's gift giving. Yeah. And gift receiving. And, and I don't think that's that's his main one. His is more touch. Okay. You know, yeah, as, as you've seen around yeah. the office. Which, speaking of, uh, it's touch time. Uh, Luke needs his touchies. You're right. So we uh, will be right back after this ad break. We have to go touch Luke. Um, he's our editor, for those wondering. It's he's not, editing it's not this a different episode. Luke. It's the same Luke. It's the Luke, same Luke that's been editing um, our podcast content for a while now. He works here at Super Mega. Uh, I, I, I want to make sure people are aware that this isn't some stranger that we're fondling or uh, molesting. This is an employee uh, who asks for it um, in more ways than one. But we will be right back. So thank you. Hold tight. When did we decide to stop upholding free speech as a basic right? What's playing out right now at big tech companies and social media sites sets a dangerous precedent. Look, it doesn't matter what your politics are or who you voted for, everyone should have the right to express themselves freely. Sadly, the big tech monopoly has instead opted for silencing tactics and censorship. To fight back against big tech's control of the internet, I use ExpressVPN. Ever wondered how free to access tech giants make all their money? Well, by taking your searches, video history, and everything you click on, by building a profile on you, and then selling off your sensitive data. When you use the ExpressVPN app on your computer or phone, the software hides your IP address and third parties. Hey, I'm Ryan. I don't want to do the voice anymore. Uh, when you use the ExpressVPN... <laughs> <laughs> What's more, ExpressVPN en encrypts 100% of your network data to protect you from the eavesdroppers and cyber criminals. That's why ExpressVPN is rated number one by CNET, Wired, TechRadar, and countless others. I use ExpressVPN, and I do as well, and we are super protected. We feel safe, we feel secure, we don't feel like anyone's spying on us. So let's stop allowing big tech to revoke our rights to free speech. Why not revoke their right to your data instead? Secure your internet with the VPN I trust for online protection. Visit expressvpn.com slash supermega. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash supermega to get three extra months free with our exclusive link. Expressvpn.com slash supermega. Go there. And please. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, touch time is done. Luke got his... What? I'm dehydrated from that touch time sesh. Yes, yes. That was a, that was a lot of of man handling and, and Luke man got work. his Luke got a hand a handful, I would say, and we we also got our hand our hands filled. Um, I'm but, gonna be a little sore from that one. So, we were talking about RuneScape. I was hoping you'd come back to it. <laughs> right. I've been I've been having so much fun on old school RuneScape. Like it really has been one of those like little hobbies that I've gotten back into. That I'm like, it's just been such a blessing because. When I, did you just pass gas? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, when I go home from work, usually I'm, I spend, I get home from work and I'm probably awake for eight, nine more hours before I go to bed. And dude, I spend those hours just so bored, but like, I don't want to do anything. That's the thing. I'm like tired and I'm just like, there's stuff I should be doing. I mm -hmm. should be cleaning my house. I should be, you know, feeding my pets. It's a hobby that you have. This is, it's hobby time. It is. This little nook of time that you're describing. Doesn't need to be filled with being productive or feeling like you're you're enhancing society. In well, any I feel way. like I have to. You can to. be enhancing Matthew. 
you know, it's like I have this thing where it's like I feel like if I'm not doing something productive, I'm wasting my time, which is which it is, is something it, productive. It's, it's going a, towards your the betterment of your mental health. It is. And I'm, I'm building I'm building an account. And, you know, last night I was thinking to myself, I'm like. Well, I mean, what's the end goal? I, I hit a bunch of high levels and then what? Yeah. But then I started thinking to myself, I said, well, that's thinking about the end of the journey. It's, it's the journey. It's the, the journey way. itself, you know? And it's fun comparing stats with Luke. Of course. I am smoking him right now. Yeah. If you put a little more, you know, hours into it. Well, if he didn't come to board game nights, you know, I'm sure he'd have a lot more time. But Which, can you stop inviting him so much? You, because he needs you to. You didn't play any board games. You didn't I played play RuneScape. Yeah, and see, that's played, where me and Luke You differ. played RuneScape the whole time. I sat on the couch while you guys played board games and I played RuneScape on my phone. <laughs> yep. Which is, you know, great. But... Well, I didn't really want to play board games because yeah. that night was originally planned for the three of you. And mm -hmm. I felt like I was intruding. I was there, but I, I didn't want to intrude. So okay. I, I thought I would, you know, my presence is still there. But, you know, I'd let you guys do the thing you set out to do. I didn't want yeah. to, you know. I will say the way you're describing RuneScape is exactly what, like, board games and shit is what I've, like, it's that new kind of little addiction, that new little thing. <laughs> where I've that's why I've specifically gone out of the way. There'll be like an hour left, or like let's say it's like ten thirty. I'm like I don't know what I'm gonna do. I can easily like pull out Spirit Island and have like a play solo, by yourself a solo run of that for like an hour and a half or so. Um, Listen, I'll share. You know, as long as I'm playing, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll give weekly updates on some stats. But I'll okay. let you know where I'm standing right now. All right, okay, let, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Everyone's wondering. Everyone's curious. It's they. The press has been asking. They, my phone's been ringing off the hook. They say, Matt, what are your OSRS skills in 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 stats? And it, and before they preface this by going, Matt, I know that you don't want to release this info, and this isn't your like way to like humble brag or just to talk about RuneScape without any of us actually caring or or showing interest in it. But I mean, it is it is it is your podcast, and we'd be more than happy for you to thank you to to to. to to share with us your stats, even though the average viewer probably doesn't care. That's what the advertisers say. Um, that's that's not, not what you say. That's not what I'm saying. Right. Well, I've only had this account for a little, uh, three weeks or so. Mm -hmm. You had it. You had it back in uh, Hawaii. I made it in when we were in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So that that was that was the you second week of February. Yes. So, and now it's the end of February. I'm combat level fifty one. Now, now these are very modest stats there's nothing super impressive okay. but i'm you know attack 40 nice strength 36 and okay. defense 41 Ooh. magic 49 agility 23 okay because you're fishing though fishing's 33 i need to work on it okay okay, okay. fire making 34 and wood cutting 30 but prayer is 54 okay that's very useful and uh herb lore seven thieving five Craft, crafting 14, you know, and Slayer 27. So I I got, I got a bit of smithing's 37, mining's 20, only 20. So, you know, you guys could see where I've, you know, I've got to improve. But, you know. Or people just heard numbers and go, I don't play that game. But most people should be playing RuneScape. They should. And for the, for the, the turkeys out there that did understand that, you know, I'm still working. But one of these days, there's a lot of super mega fans that are very high level old school RuneScape players. Well, th there was uh, when we were doing ours, I, uh, we got helped out a bit, like big time. And it sounds like you're doing the same thing, using fans for RuneScape Gold. I never. I, I, he said trade me real quick. I didn't even seek him out. He found me, and then he gave me. And I told him, I said, Brandon, I feel bad taking this. I don't. I don't want to take this. And he said, It's no problem. You so, felt bad taking it. I did. Did you? Yeah, I mean, I felt bad because that's a lot of money. I took it. <laughs> How hey, much was it? Ten million gold. <sighs> it, 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 it like it has it grudges me. me to take this ten million gold. The 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 weight I have to bear on my shoulders by accepting ten million gold from you. He was a pretty maxed out player, so he has. I'm, he probably I'm, doesn't like really. I'm sure he continues. Like, are there, for example, a lot of games after you do the main quests and stuff, there's, like, this online feature where they will have, like, random daily or weekly quests. There's a lot of example. daily tasks and okay. stuff. And a lot of people that max out continue playing every day. Mm -hmm. I think he's one of them. And, uh, you know, it would just be a shame if more players did that same thing that Brandon did. Yeah. It would just really weigh on my conscience a lot. Yeah, if um, more people, like, if you 
tweeted out the exact world where you were. Not where you were specifically. Maybe you did. No, I just said and, I'm and, in this world. Yeah, I'm in this world. I'm, uh, you know, try to find me. It would, it would probably take, the first time was great, but it would probably take away from your gaming experience if someone were to come again and give you another 10 million or 20 it, million. It would be unfortunate. Yeah. It would cut into the enjoyment of the game for me. Exactly. You know, because then instead of having to work for my money, it's just handed to me. Yeah, and then Who like, wants to live like that? But you're not going to say no because you don't want to seem rude. I don't want to so seem rude. You have to take it with the knowledge that oh, I have to take this burden of more gold to spend. I mean, the burden also falls on Luke because I share some of that money with him because he's my friend. So, How much gold is too much gold to spend? Like, were you given, like, 10 million gold? Is that just like, well, you don't need to, like, work for gold anymore type of gold? Or is I it like buy yourself a few big things? No, I still have over a million gold. No, well, but he gave you 10. He gave some to Luke. So you, I mean, it seems like you're running through the gold. Well, see, I have been using it on uh, expensive items to help me level faster. See? Okay. And, and nice armor and stuff. Okay. Um, it, It's been very helpful. Been buying a lot of runes, you know? So you might... You're running. You're almost I'm, I'm going to be out within a few days. <sighs> so it would... Again, it would be very unfortunate if Matt tweeted out his location... If someone were to show up, even if it was the same person, could you imagine uh, shows up and finds you and gives you another ten million so you can continue on your merry way? Um, yeah, I mean, unfor retro Brandon, unfortunately, you know, he has too much love in his heart. You know, he was cursed with too much love to give. And what are you gonna do? Not accept that love? Because that might crush his soul. You know, that might crush his spirits. And and you know, exactly. Clearly, you know. <laughs> This meant a lot to him, so I'll I'll pity him and take his gold. But yeah, well, that's my RuneScape talk for this episode. Well, glad you're having fun. Get excited for plenty more of it, guys. All right, there's gonna be a lot more RuneScape talk. Okay. Yeah. You got any got any uh, questions you want to ask people who might be knowledgeable? No, I just use the wiki. Okay, the wiki's pretty fantastic. You know, what about you? Do you have any questions for RuneScape? No, just in general for, for the, the audience. For the audience. Yeah. Um, I'm sure in the comments they'd love to answer these questions. Uh, what was your rating on a scale of uh, one to three of uh, your February audience? On a scale of one to three. One, one being three. bad, two being okay, and three being great. For me? I'd give it a two. Yeah, two. Yeah, same here. It was okay. You know, it was an okay February. It wasn't a bad month. It wasn't a great month. No. You know? I've had better months, but but you know I'm I'm happy with with how February yeah. turned out. Cheers to March! Yeah, let's you know? let's see what let's see what March has. I'm for gonna us. be I'm gonna be celebrating my grandmother's 90th birthday very soon. Oma? Yep. Yeah. Oma. Oma's turning the big nine zero. Damn, that's a pretty big. Which people in your family live a long time. That might be good for me. Well, not uh, not on my dad's side. On my mom's side, more so. So. Well, I get, I guess, more of the jeans from my mom's side, so I guess I should be looking at that, right? You do. You really look like your mom. So and you got your mom's jeans and her beard. You've um, got your mother's eyes. Your mother's mother's eyes. I know. Harry Potter. Yep. Harry yep. Potter. I uh, yeah. I uh, Snape. Mm. Snape be like, look at me. You've got your mother's eyes. And even uh, <gasps> Professor, I forget his name, but he, the one that gets. The one that turns himself into like an armchair to hide from uh, Dumbledore in the beginning of the I forgot his name. I know you're talking movie. about the the kind of like the, the, he the collects chubby. he collects students. He likes getting like a lot of high like prowess students and he has being his little dinner party. Yes, yeah. him that turn no t t what the fuck is his name? Who cares? I don't. I, I really you like you look very much like your father. Yes, except for the eyes. Of course. You have your and then Harry interrupts him and says, My mother's eyes. Yes, yes. I like uh he has dinner parties with students. <laughs> Very inappropriate, by the way. And um uh, He was giving them some alcohol one time. He was. <laughs> Which I was like, Oh, they're old enough to drink, but then later in the movie In the movie they're like sixteen. They can't or I, then I realized they're not old enough to drink yet. <laughs> no, and I was they're like, like what? There's I guess uh in uh You have to be eighteen to drink. Yeah, in England. But they're not 18. No. And they're also not in England. They're in Hogwarts. Which is... Well, you know what? Actually, I, I drinking laws might be very different in the Wizarding World. Yeah. You know? So, Actually, okay. So, like, canonically, is the Wizarding World just, like, 
Hogwarts, is this just in some mountains or is it in some kind of like realm? Other realm. I think it's in another realm. Because they do have to go through the portal in like, um, uh, they have to go either through the wall of that bar to get into Diagon Alley from the like muggle place, I guess, or they have to go, uh, in that nine and three quarters brick wall bullshit. I think it is in another realm. Okay. Because it seems like everywhere they go, they have to, they, they can't just walk. To Hogwarts, you yes. know, they have to... They take a train, a special train. No, but wait. That's at a platform that they have to go through a portal to get to. In the second or third they movie... They fly the car. They fly the car, and they meet up with the train. They fly the car from from The Muggle, England. yeah, from yeah. the whatever the fuck that station's called. So it has to be in this realm. Hmm. You know? Otherwise, how would they get there? Unless the car is a is a but is a is a vessel of transportation to the next realm. I guess then they could be like the government doesn't know about it because they just think it's nature. The government mountains. does know about it, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's right, because the uh they the mentioned ministers the Muggle talk Prime about it, yeah. Yeah. So talk to the Muggle Prime Minister about it. Yeah. But people in general don't know about the wizarding world. Just like I guess high level government. Of I each mean person. It's crazy because like what I also in, don't think uh uh the bitch who wrote these uh books Thought that people would think into it so much. The bitch? Uh, the slimy Neanderthalic cunt. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I'm just mud slinging, okay? You're, you're slinging mud I'm right slinging now. I'm slinging a little mud, you know? You're casting dark I'm, magic. I'm being a dirty little man because, uh, because she disagrees, uh, with me. So, I then have Not to- Not me. I, I have to internalize it and then, and then call her mean things. And- you know, at the end of the day, does it really matter though? Still billions and billions of dollars. And that's just talking about me. I'm sure JK has trillions. <laughs> did you uh did you see what Warner Brothers said? Mm-mm. They announced uh their in production of the ninth Harry Potter movie. No, they didn't. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Wait, really? That was the play, wasn't it? Yeah, they're turning it into a movie now. Is Daniel Radcliffe coming? Like are all of them coming back? Because uh, it all it has to deal. Because in the cursed child play, Hermione's black. Are they just gonna recast all the main characters? Are they gonna ask them to come back? What? Listen to this. Okay. I just searched it. I saw this recently. Let me go on uh, the news tab on Google. Okay. Uh, Harry Potter's Luna Lovegood actor doubles down on J.K. Rowling defense. Wait, what? The Luna Lovegood actor, like. Defense, J.K. Rowling shit. I mean, that could just be some. It's screen rant. That could be clickbait. She could be it's clickbait, defending yeah. against J.K. Rowling. And yeah. That could be like, yeah, who knows? Her defense, you know. Uh, listen to this. Huge news for Harry Potter fans as major new project gets underway. As I and I can exclusively reveal bosses at Warner Brothers Studio. Film insiders told me how senior executives have started developing Harry Potter and the Cursed Child at Warner developing. Brothers. So, and this is through not an official announcement. No, they haven't done an official Warner Brothers announcement. Yeah. So, so let me let me retract for, that and say it's not officially announced. Got can't got to wait for Warner Brothers Con. <sighs> which is uh for those who don't know the Warner's bro the Warner Brothers convention that they hold. Brothers Con, yeah. Yeah. Not to be confused with the Funny Brothers Con. No, that which, is this summer. Also a much better event. But we don't, we, we're not in a place to announce that just yet. No. But we will soon. Um, this is not, it's not an official <clears throat> announcement of, of Funny Brothers Con. Uh, Gucci, Gucci. <laughs> yeah, I just finished watching all the Harry Potter movies, though. I, because I'd seen them my whole life, but I'd never seen them, like, one after the other. Yeah. Because I always saw them so spaced out, but the universe was always just kind of, like, very strung together because I just have, would have to remember from the one I saw last year what mm -hmm. happened. So it's my first time watching them all the way through. And uh, they're fun movies. Yeah. I very much disagree with, with J.K. Rowling's sentiments. Of course. But the movies are very fun. Very but, nostalgic for me. But in general, like, in the people behind more so the movie, J.K. Rowling had a lot to do in terms of, like, the writing and, like, signing off on stuff to do with the movies. But in terms of the vision and the tone that was set, I feel like that more and strongly goes towards, like, the set designers. Oh, yeah. Specifically. And, the actors. And the... Christopher Columbus and the actors. Um, Christ uh, sorry. Christopher Columbus, while he has done some abhorrent things in his past, um, I'm glad he took the several, uh, the, uh, the couple hundred years to think about what he did, or the few hundred years. 
And um, I don't know. He came out with Home Alone and then decided to turn Harry Potter into a film. And now he's a great director. Nobody really remembers him for oh. all the other stuff like he did in his past. It's a fantastic comeback. Yeah. It's a great comeback story. <laughs> The, the the Chris Columbus director is the same guy. <laughs> yeah, he just lived through you know. But you know, people change, right? You know, he had he had a, he had several hundred years to think about what he had done. Yes. So you know, honestly, in my mind, his sins are washed clean with with the Harry Potter movies. You know, those movies do I I would say for the most part hold up, other than like the cheesy green screen Voldemort in the fifth movie, the the one before the. Half Blood Prince, the Order of the Phoenix. Order of the Phoenix, um, <clears throat> like at the end when they're in the Ministry, and it's like Harry, you gotta fight him, and then like Voldemort will flash on screen, it'll be like, <sighs> and it'll be like a shitty fucking green screen, like that. Th that was a bit like, how did that get past <laughs> editing, even in that time for such a big franchise? My favorite but, is in Goblet of Fire when when Harry is in like gets teleported to the place where he confronts Voldemort. And they have to like to escape. They have to like grab the chalice, and they escape. And Voldemort like turns around and like drops to his knees. And he's like, "No!" <laughs> yeah. And it's the cheesiest shit. It's so funny. I I I, I never. Maybe it's because I was older and of course less scared of Voldemort. Because as a kid, I was scared of Voldemort. But then growing up, I saw the last movie when I was a senior in high school. And so maybe it's just that when it came to me being in high school and seeing like the last three movies. Uh, Voldemort didn't hit as hard. And then the fourth one, I even remember when I was still younger than that, it not hitting as hard. And I can't tell if that's like I love Ralph Fiennes, but I but I all I I just wonder if his performance I don't know, it's just, it's just weird cuz every character in 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 those movies feels like them. McGonagall, Snape, like they all have a lot of characterization to go along with them physically as long as well as like their speech. And stuff like that. Voldemort just seemed like boring, cringy, try-hard villain. Like, I'm going to kill you. I can touch you now. Ah, ah. It does feel very like basically written villain. Yes. You know. And he didn't and he doesn't have like any depth. No, he doesn't have any depth at all. He's just evil, right? I just see him differently after I say I see after watching Schindler's List. <laughs> yeah, I see Voldemort a little differently. <laughs> of course, uh, um, he plays a same actor. Ralph Fiennes plays plays a Nazi in that movie, very evil Nazi. Yes. Well, speaking of movies that do, for the most part, hold up, like the Harry Potter. There, I saw a movie last night with Justin that does not hold up that I saw in theaters with my dad. Oh, way back. It's when. gonna be a good one then. Open season. Oh, I loved that movie, dude. I, I did not enjoy it my second time. The second time through, you can hear, you can almost hear Martin Lawrence's just begrudging, just, yeah, what's going on? Like, he doesn't know how to voice act. Every now and then, he'll give, like, a little bit of a gruffness to Boog, the bear. And uh, Ashton Kutcher is, his, his character's annoying, but I also feel like his voice acting was definitely over the top and obnoxious if you but maybe that's also the, the character was today. obnoxious yeah it was fantastic when I pooped, loved it I screamed and laughed as a kid I was like they showed an animal poop on screen oh I watched where do you go to the bathroom I don't know I never really think about it <laughs> all those poops I screamed with laughter as well I, yeah I had it on DVD and my mom and I watched it and I remember there was one scene that was so funny that we we were I, rem I still remember did you rewind it she was in the chair I was on the couch in the living room and we were crying with laughter, and we, we, we re rewound it, and we probably watched it three or four times, the scene. Okay. I don't remember what the scene was. Oh, I just well, remember it was fun. If you were there, you could have rem maybe reminded us a little bit. I probably would still laugh. It made um, me laugh that hard. But, uh, oh, also, I wanted to remind the audience about some ad reads that they're going to have to listen oh, yeah. to in three, two, one. 2023 is already well underway, so don't wait any longer to level up your small business and set your year up for success. Get ahead of the competition by using Stamps.com to mail and ship. Stamps.com lets you print your own postage and shipping labels right from your home or office. It's ready to go in minutes, so you can get back to running your business sooner. It's a one-stop shop for all your shipping and mailing needs. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Get access to USPS and UPS shipping services you need to run your business right from your computer anytime, day or night, no lines, no traffic, no waiting. 
And if you sell products online, Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. I've recently been selling beans online, just individual beans, and they've been, they've been selling like hotcakes. But I can't do that without the help of Stamps.com. With their great discounted shipping rates, I can ship these beans right from my desk super, super, super duper easy. So set up your business for success just like I did when you get started with Stamps.com. Sign up with promo code SUPERMEGA for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code SUPERMEGA. Thanks, Stamps. Now I'm selling beans like never before. Hello there, Super Mega Cast listeners. I, Ryan McGee, want to talk to you about Etsy. I love to shop on Etsy for beautifully made items from independent sellers. Etsy sellers have everything from statement pieces like rugs and sofas to daily staples like outwear and accessories. Shop jackets, jewelry, furniture, art, and more made for all budgets and any occasion. I personally, um, I, I've talked about on the podcast, I, I've developed a bit of a, a, a board gaming uh, habit slash addiction. Uh, more of a habit. On Etsy, there are sellers who sell custom pieces and boards and mats for certain games. So I've 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 used it and bought some and and the sellers are great. The sellers are epic. It upgrades the game quality, you know, it it, it helps keep things more organized. These 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 sellers are are off are off the chain. New to Etsy? Use the code NEW for 10% off your first purchase. That's code NEW. Maximum discount value of $50. Offer ends June 30th, 2023. See terms at etsy.com slash terms. For home style and gift shop, etsy.com. Etsy has it. This episode of Super Megacast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. I'm not the same person I was last year, and I'm not the same person I was yesterday. And the Lord knows I won't be the same person a year from now. So that's why it's important to understand yourself every step of the process. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding. Because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Therapy is single-handedly the best decision I ever made in my life. From anxiety to depression to things like, you know, OCD I struggle with. Therapy has helped me understand the way my brain works, the way my emotions work. And I feel like a much stronger person overall, happier person, and I can't recommend therapy enough, and BetterHelp's a great way to do it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash SuperMega to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash SuperMega. Welcome back, everyone. That's right. We're back. Yep. And we have a lot to talk about this episode, or this 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 last uh, bit of the episode. We're in the home stretch here. Unless you're sticking around on the Patreon for the after hours, then you're gonna get some, you're gonna get some goofs and gaffs that you can't see anywhere else. Oh yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, I saw a good movie. I really enjoyed. Hey, don't stop kissing the mic. Stop. I can never, ever use that microphone. Why not? It's gone through a lot. Yeah, it has. You, you shat this your is pants. my baby. You shat your pants directly into that microphone. You know, it's it's an historic uh, idol. It's a historic, uh, what's a fuck, amulet? I don't know. What What, what is like a, a thing that's sacred? A relic? A relic. It, yeah, yeah, it's a sacred relic. It is. It's your sacred relic. I, I, I don't want my Our sacred sacred relic, Matt. It's specifically yours. It is yeah, ours. I mean, I mean, yes, it is mine. I, I, if anyone used this mic but me, I would be very furious. I did use it recently when I sat in your seat. But I will say, uh, I don't know, you've had a lot of lips and tongue on that mic. Your, your, your anus has been in close it's my proximity. Little, it's, it's my little guy. You've tooted into it many times. He's been with me for for the longest of times. I'd be curious to put it under a microscope and and see if, if there's anything interesting there. I mean, with a microscope, probably, you'll probably just find germs. Because, um, I mean, if I we're, also we're don't speaking think you, into I it. also don't think uh, this isn't a knock to you. I also don't think you have the the knowledge to tell what would be bad or not through a microscope. Well, that's what you think, Ryan. (laughs) 
I did microbiology. It was my major at USC. Oh, when did you graduate? 2018. Mm. The whole thing about me dropping out, that was a lie. I just thought you'd call me a nerd if I told you I had a degree That's in right. microbiology. Got it, got it. If you study microbiology, you're a fucking nerd. So just uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Put put that in your slide and look at it. Bitches. Yeah, see that right there? I'm supporting hey, that here. put this under a microscope. What do you see? Probably a lot of nothing. Uh, whatever's on the screen, I guess. Yeah. Or it would... You like that? Yeah. I did see a movie I liked, though. I saw The Triangle of Sadness. Nice. I enjoyed it. I had a very good soundtrack. Okay. Um, There is just a like a 20-minute scene that's nothing but vomiting and diarrhea. Mm. Uh, Very grotesque vomiting. Nice. Like, straight, like, in front of the camera vomiting. What is the synopsis of the movie? Uh, or uh, a summary of... So there's a male events, model. But, okay. There's a male model. It's about a male model. And his model girlfriend. They're influencers. They go on a... Uh, really luxurious rich person cruise on a yacht with other billionaires. Oh, is this the one with Woody Harrelson? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. heard a lot of great things about it. I heard it's super fun. It is very fun. Um and then they're on a they're on a yacht with the with the ultra rich. They go on an island and then it's it's a it's a movie about class. It is because then the survivors on the island all of a sudden class Have doesn't the power. matter, right? The the, the people with uh, the people with more knowledge about like engineering or just anything to do with just kind of like hard manual labor, they of course are more helpful on the island than the rich people who sit back and usually let those people do it themselves. It is yes. one of those movies though where the ending is one of the endings that you have to decide what happens. Mm-hmm. I, heard that, I heard people didn't like that about it. Uh, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of of endings where you decide. I like a movie that has its own interpretation built in, where it's more like. It's more like we can interpret anything from it, but the movie has like a solid of, yeah, like in universe of what happened. But I guess then you can say the same thing. I guess with wait, Quentin Tarantino knows what's in the suitcase, right? Yeah. So this was fully like you decide what no, happens at okay. the end. Yeah. Um, uh, I really enjoyed it though. It was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was a dark comedy, so it's it's got it's got some funny moments. How was Woody in it? He was great. He's smoking weed. Did you see his uh, no, SNL was, monologue? He was an alcoholic in the movie. Oh, well, uh, did you see his SNL? I didn't monologue? see his SNL monologue. What? How'd it go? Hold up. Let me let me see if I can pull up a, a little bit for you. Is get, it uh, get, get your reaction? Exhilarating. Yeah, it's a good monologue. I mean, I just brought it up because uh, he's Ryan, in the movie. Your vape is starting to get that flavor. I know that uh, that not so good flavor. Okay. in the world get together and buy up all the media and all the politicians and force all the people in the world to stay locked in their homes and people can only come out if they take the cartel's drugs and keep taking them over and over. I threw the script away. I mean, who is going to believe that crazy idea? <laughs> okay, so... The- <laughs> so it, he's making a, an anti-vax statement? I don't know. It sounds. It sounds. It it sounds like he's, uh, he's, uh, conflating the National Health Organization uh, with with uh, drug cartels who dismember and uh, slit the throats of sons in front of their fathers. Which, um, a lot of drug companies. I mean, I'm not going to defend fucking drug companies. No, I mean the they're, ph- they're pharmaceutical shitty. companies but, are, are but no it, angels. They're it horrible. is a funny narrative. I guess to kind of, it, it, it's more of um, it gets into conspiracy theory territory where I am not of the mind where I think the government or all these organizations are doing things for our benefit or doing things, uh, to necessarily help us, and that's why they're run. A lot of them are run to make money. Of course, most of them are, if not all. Uh, it's 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 more so of the the classic, um. They're they're putting something in 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 our water. They're turning the frogs right, right, right. gay. Right. In Ohio, there's there's proof and evidence of a big explosion and a lot of people going to those water sources and stuff. But in this case, it seems like it's it's the people who hear that and go, "Oh yeah, that's right." Are the people who also believe that, like in our truck sim video that we just ran across randomly, it's the same people who believe that they're putting AIDS in the vaccine. Like, it's not just, like, this logical, hmm, 
Maybe drug corporations don't have it out for you. It's maybe they don't have it out for you and they're giving your, you AIDS. It's they like are giving there's you an AIDS. extra sting to it that is like, okay, step back a little bit. Yes, they're greedy. Yes, they're bullshit and like it sucks, but I don't think they're they're putting AIDS. I don't in, think they're giving the world the population COVID AIDS. Um, but you know, in in uh, twenty years, we might have to put out an apology because ninety nine point nine percent of the world's population has AIDS, all thanks to the COVID vaccination. And then everyone dies, and no one can buy any products from these people unless they have the cure. Wait a second. I just figured out what he's on about. There you go. If you give everyone a disease. (laughs) Yeah. You know? So uh, we'll all need the cure for AIDS soon, apparently. I don't know. I discovered it several years ago, but I'm waiting for the right buyer Mm -hmm. because that's not information I'm going to give away for free. Yes, it would help humanity, but come on. You know? I know. What do you think about Woody Harrelson? What he has to say? A lot of truth, I guess. I guess you you would agree with his statements. I like him as an actor. (laughs) You know? I Mm -hmm. think he's very good in True Detective and... Great in Catching Fire. <laughs> His best role. Fantastic. I still don't understand why they thought it would be a great idea to give him that, like, hair piece. Who is he in Catching Fire again? He's the... I mean, he's he's in all the Hunger Games movies. He's the fucking... I forgot. Uh, he has a weird name. So he's the fucking dude that won previously. In oh, district. that's right. Yeah. So... But they gave him, like, this fucking weird hair piece. It's kind of like when they... Whenever they give actors, like, hair pieces that just don't really work for him. Like when they gave Nick Cage one, or maybe that was just awful hair. I remember <laughs> Nick Cage had this weird-ass fucking haircut at some point in like the mid to late 2000s that just looked odd. It like made his forehead look big. It like came up a little too. It's like it's like he was pushing all the hair that he had and going, see, I have hair, but it was only standing tall. And he like wasn't, not, you know, kind of like what you're going through a little bit. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Luke. Was that uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's last movie? See, this is me undies. D- Wait, did they, did they sponsor this episode? I don't know. I haven't checked the, ad, the ads yet. Well, if they didn't, blur that out, Luke. But they are still fantastic underwear. Yes. But wasn't that Philip Seymour Hoffman's last role? It was one of the Hunger Games movies? I think so, and yeah. And they had to CG him they, in? Yep. Yeah. Nowadays, they could just use some AI, put it over someone else's face. Exactly. Make it look super realistic. Well, still a lot of uh, studios fail to do that. Uh, I think we've talked about it. I don't know if it was in the podcast or a playthrough. We were talking about how Disney, with all their millions of dollars, for some reason, can't get a decent kind of AI face thing. De-aging. Like, it always looks kind of off and weird. And then someone on YouTube will put up, like, I made it better. Like, in yeah, a week some, after it airs. Some college kid. It's like weird because... a few because, days after it airs. Like, uh, I won't say spoilers, but in a certain... Breaking Bad spinoff when there's certain flashbacks to certain characters. I'm like, why don't they just, like, they go all crazy. Yeah, he's crazy. a 25-year-old. Yeah, they go crazy with the <laughs> practical makeup, but it's like, that's fine. Do all the practical makeup and then use AI to enhance it. Someone did, you showed me what someone did with Better Call Saul when they did the de-aging technology, and I think it looked pretty fucking good. I get it would be too much to do it for the entire series. But it was but only in certain scenes. For certain flashbacks? It Especially definitely... if they were black and white, too. You know, I think it adds to the whole, like, you know how certain effects can help mask an effect? I mm-hmm. feel like black and white would help mask the effect of, like, de-aging a little more. than Because, like, when you see color and stuff, I guess, when you see things of how they would be presented to you in life... Your brain, it's easier for it to pick out what's wrong. But if you put a sheet over it, right. you're probably your brain's more likely to probably give it the benefit of the doubt. Aging is is weird because I look at videos we did in like twenty even like twenty eighteen, and then I look at myself now on videos and I just my face is different. Yeah. Like we're hearing like fans, for example, like when they when they come up to us whenever we're outside eating like outside or inside eating dinner at our at our one of our favorite restaurants, let's say. They come up to us, they start screaming, I've been watching you since I was in middle school. I've been watching you for six years, seven years. I'm, I'm, I'm like, damn, that's a chunk, because there's a chunk of my life I remember, like, when, you know, we were out here before Super Mega was even a thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. It's just, like, weird to conceptualize that amount of time has passed just by doing Super Mega. You guys get to watch us age in real time. And you know yep. what's fun? How have we aged, by the way, uh, since since starting the channel? I know right, I, I've put on a little bit of weight since Creator Clash. And when you look uh, great. earlier on, I, uh, I was a, a little bit thinner. But 
I wonder how our... Uh, do we look our age? Since you stopped smoking cigarettes, mm-hmm. honestly, you, you can like, tell, like, a good your difference? face looks younger. Thanks. Like, Thank your you. face looks a lot younger since you stopped smoking cigarettes. Thank you. I feel like cigarettes... Well, yeah, cigarettes obviously age you quicker, but, like, since you stopped smoking cigarettes, your face just looks more youthful. I probably should also start doing, like, a routine of, like, since we live in L.A., of uh, sunblock or and uh, That's skin a big, I should be doing extent, that. Like, moisturizer. I'm going to age a lot worse than you. you got good genes. We'll see. We'll I got, see. I mean, hopefully I, we'll both uh, be around to see each other age for a bit. I hope so. You know? Ooh, I got to poop. Yeah? Yeah. Is this where we're going to have to wrap it up? It is. It is. But not for those who are subscribed to our Patreon. That's right. The After Show, which costs how much? Five bucks a month. Five dollars a month. Every episode has has an extended After Hours Mm -hmm. uh, bonus segment. So if this wasn't enough for you, if this didn't tickle uh, that, scratch that itch you got, you can go over to Patreon right now, get a bunch of bonus stuff. And the moment you buy it, it comes with all the previous stuff that we upload. It's not like you buy it and then it starts unlocking stuff for you. All of our backlog right, from right, years right. of having the Patreon is on there. All of our past Q&As, all of uh, the past stuff that we tried, like before the after show, we had the mini cast. There's so there's like episodes of that episodes. on there. There's a lot of extra stuff on there. Matt posts some playlists sometimes. If you're looking for new music, you might want to hit up the... A Patreon for that. Got unreleased songs we've made. Yeah. There's, There's just a lot of fucking A lot of shit. fun stuff. So, so uh, yeah, when you do go, you'll get all the past stuff over the last, since what, 2018? Yeah. 2019? Oof. So it's it's a pretty big backlog. So, and we're continuously, we got some new stuff coming <sighs> soon to it we're very excited about. But it's, uh, if you stick around for the after hours, you're going to hear the review of Ryan's, Ryan's shit. Yeah. And I, which I'm taking right now. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a marvelous day and uh, don't die. Love you guys. Thanks for the support. Mwah! Do, 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 but That's a slam dunk when I see Matt and Ryan from Super Mega. Love you guys. Man, it's always a slam dunk when I see Ryan and Matt. Love you guys.